Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Quick, episode 154. Today, we're not going to be doing really a draft. It's going to be a ranking instead because we only have two of us, so we figured a draft between us two. Not as exciting as if we have three or four, so instead we're going to do a ranking. So we're still going to have 20 picks total since we're doing 10 each for a ranking of our favorite casting choices of all time. It was an interesting topic we were talking about the other day because sometimes I feel like it's hard to distinguish between what's a good casting choice versus what's just like a good performance by a good actor. Yeah. So the lines are very blurry. So a lot of this is very like up to your own personal interpretation. Um, but we each got a list of 10 here and we're going to go through them. Um, we'll, we'll go through them, I guess, in like draft format ish, just go like you go 10 and then I'll go 10 and then we'll just kind of go back and forth. But if we mm-hmm. pick the same one, we'll keep like, it's not, we're not eliminated. Yeah, 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 yeah. And to be honest, I, I don't know. We probably might not have much or if anything overlapping anyways, but. I tried to do mine. Like some of mine are some like obvious picks that people have heard before, uh, but a good amount of mine I feel like are just ones that I was just like looking through my letterbox and I was just like, oh, yeah, that's a really good casting choice. Maybe mm-hmm. it's not the top ten greatest of all time, but I'm gonna throw it on my list just to be like, just to have fun with the topic. But um, we'll start with you, number ten. What's your what's your number ten in this ranking for so casting choices? The ranking itself is very arbitrary. Like this could like I kind of just went through like I did, I did what you did. I just went through my like. Some of my favorites list, and I was like, I just picked mm-hmm. some out that I love. Um, some of them basic, some of them not so much. So I wouldn't pay too much attention to like the specific placements, I guess. Yeah. Um, but if I had to go in number 10, uh, I'm gonna go for I'm gonna I'm gonna go for John Hurt, the elephant man, or John Merrick. Mm-hmm. That is my pick. That is my pick. Is that correctly spelled John Merrick? No, it's John Hurt. John Merrick is the elephant man. So if you put John John Hurt as the actor. Is it H U R R? No, Hurt as in Hurt. I hurt myself today. Ah. Uh, so John Hurt played, plays yeah. John Merrick in the Elephant Man. Yes. And John yeah. Hurt played Ollivander in the Harry Potter films. You know, the, oh wow, yeah. Yeah. Cool guy. Damn. Cool guy. Harry Potter films are just littered with like, because like when you when I think about the Harry Potter movies, like the casts aren't actually like the most like crazy thing in the world, but they're all like people who have been in like so many gems, you know, like yeah, everyone. definitely, yeah, almost yeah. similar. I mean, it kind of I guess we we've been talking about Mad Max all week and like how George Miller just has all like the classic Australians. Um, Harry Potter just kind of picks all like you know the Brits, yeah, and 100%. I guess are the Gleasons Irish or British? They'd be Irish, right? The Gleasons Irish, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's. It's just a Europe affair for Harry Potter. But for my number 10, I wanted to pick something from like, I I wanted to pick a couple that are really new and then a couple that are older, just kind of switch it up. So number 10 for me, again, the order is arbitrary, but I'm going to go Paul Giamatti as Paul Hunnam in the holdovers. So we didn't even try to do this, but I guess we both have, like you have a John playing a John, I have a Paul playing a Paul. (laughs) Um, But I I feel like this was such a great casting because it's kind of like, just a perfect eclipse for his career because yeah. he's played so many roles where, well, like specifically I'm thinking about like big fat liar. And like when he's in like the, the hangover movies where he plays like a you know, uh, yeah, a guy yeah. in power, who's mm-hmm. like just an asshole. So like, that's like perfect for this movie where like it sets you up immediately. Like, Oh, this dude's going to be an ass, but then he has like that endearing side of him. So I feel like it was just like a great casting just from everything you've seen him in, in the past kind of puts that dichotomy of what you're expecting from him. Um, but yeah, number nine cool. for you. Uh, I'm going to go again. This is just like a pick that I found. I think it's kind of a cool one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go um, F. Mori Abraham for Antonio Soleri and Amadeus. I think that is like mm-hmm. unbelievable. Like an unbelievable. In terms of what I've read about the character and about him as a person, I think that's just a, yeah, that's like a perfect, perfect, perfect choice. Probably butchered spelling Soleri, but maybe you can double it. Uh, it's so replace the second L with an I. Like that. I think we're good. It's probably a little oh, wait, no, and, play, and then replace the A with an E. Salieri. That's the one. There we go. Yeah. No, that's a great pull. That's a great pull. And honestly, even the even the guy who plays Amadeus and Amadeus. Oh, like, yeah, that whole cast is kind of crazy. And, it's between that and the boy Wolfgang. Because he was like yeah. crazy as well. <laughs> yeah, it's between one of the Wolfgang goes so crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, fucking crazy. Um, my next pick, there's kind of like a cam move because I'm picking another Paul, but I'm, again, another modern choice. I'm on Timothy Chalamet as Paul Atreides yeah, in, in Dune, yeah. which I feel like we couldn't really call a great casting choice until we saw Dune Part 2 because I feel like he has 
we already knew he had like the look and like you know because he's like a, on the scrawnier side he, he looks pretty innocent for like dune part one where he's not the powerful least yeah, 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 so i think like cool. dune part two seeing that he was able to make that flip and be so that great too. when he's that terrifying guy that's when i was like okay yeah so it was a great casting because dune part one was like yeah timothy's perfect for that because he's like naturally it plays usually an innocent character but dune part two solidified it for me um number eight for you my uh, number eight where do i go from here um do you know what i'm gonna throw one out there i'm gonna say killian murphy as a uh, mr robert oppenheimer mm -hmm. as j robert oppenheimer yeah i mean yeah. It's, it's a risky pick like he's never really led a film especially of that magnitude before like yeah technically he was the lead of like 28 days later but that's just like a whole different ball game acting -wise yeah yeah definitely, definitely oppenheimer but yeah no great poll great poll uh yeah he won the so we got a real talk award winner in, in the in the draft real talk award winner runner up in the in the holdovers yes. but um number eight for me i'm gonna go we're still relatively newish not as new as these last two picks but i'm gonna go benicio del toro as alejandro gillick in sicario oh that's an interesting one yeah i feel like he was just perfectly terrifying didn't really say much at all but with just his demeanor and his facial expressions terrifying dude yeah that's a good one that's a good one um okay where do i go i'm gonna go oh okay i'm gonna go um imelda staunton for umbridge in harry potter oh, God. like there is that's a crazy crazy good casting choice mm -hmm. she is literally the epitome of how that character is meant to be portrayed who's that actress again uh, Imelda Staunton. It's gonna Back throw. Easy. It's guessing. Easy. Did it straight away. Perfect. Yeah. F fuck her. Yeah. She's <laughs> Just crazy. So yeah, perfect yeah. at being the most so hateable good. person in the world. So good. Mm -hmm. Um, my number seven. I have John Travolta as Vincent Vega in Pulp Fiction. Oh, this is cool. just from like looking through my list and just looking at like yeah, my yeah. favorites on Letterbox. Is like he was just such a perfect goofy like actor to choose for that role like yeah no i agree obviously he has like the dancing and like the the char charisma but just 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 the conversation between him him and samuel jackson are so hilarious no, uh, such a weird person for that role and he had, he pulled it off uh, number six for you um oh okay i'm gonna go for hmm. i'm gonna go um i'll need to double check his name I'm gonna go uh, Al Pacino in uh, for portraying what was his name Sonny in Dog Day Afternoon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that is just for me that's Al Pacino's best performance. And obviously, same here. It's my number one real story. Um, very guy full of personality, and I think Al Pacino just captured everything, every essence, every detail, um, the charisma, the sexuality, everything. I think I think that's his best performance in a in a row of like you know historic performances as well like colleagues his way uh the godfather sense of woman yada yada whatever jack and jill obviously mm -hmm. got to well that one but in a ray of just crazy performance i think that just like stands out so i'm gonna go with mm -hmm. that what do you take al pacino or robert de niro like career performance al pacino, al pacino? yeah i've always been slightly marginally al pacino i feel like I, i've i've always kind of flip-flopped but i think i'm starting to I, I think this current slice of time i'm at al pacino but it's it's changed over the years yeah, like my, between my flipping my back and forth but right now i'm on al pacino and dog day afternoon is really the one that kind of like flipped it for me um number six for me uh, a, a pick that i'm sure cam would have probably picked but i'm going to jk simmons but not as not for whiplash but for j jonah jameson uh, shit, i had that on my yeah yeah, yeah. in spider-man just yeah, because yeah. i mean cool. it's kind of a no-brainer like he if you're brought back in a, another installment of a franchise with uh, with everyone else is new in the cast but they're like let's just run it back with you again kind of yeah, yeah kind of just a definition of you 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 kill it as casting uh yeah I, I, it might honestly be one of my favorite like specifically comic book castings ever i think it's mm -hmm. so perfect it's so good so good mm -hmm. okay i think I, yeah i have my Oh, I'm, I just want to shout RIP to two guys who won't make the list. Mm. Mike Myers for Shrek. Mm. And um, what's his name? Oh, what's his fucking name? Oh, Matthew Lillard for, for uh, Shaggy. 
because they go crazy. <laughs> All that Scooby Doo cast is so unbelievably good. Yeah. Probably. Um, my number five, I'm going to go for uh, Marlon Brando uh, for Colonel Kurtz in Apocalypse Now. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, well, you could actually say it's one of the worst ones considering what happened on set and how much of a dickhead <laughs> he was. But mm-hmm. in terms of that kind of presence to anchor that sequence in the film and really just push in such a dark and disturbing way, um, I don't think you could have chosen the better answer at the time than Marlon Brando. I think mm-hmm. he worked just perfectly, completely. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, it's just the story behind him on that production is so crazy. And it, it, yeah. you almost wonder if he's like a person like him. He probably thinks like the movie's only as great as it is because he was such an ass. Like, I bet like in his own mind, he's like, you know, if I didn't do that, this production wouldn't have been as good, you know? I mean, it, he manages to like, similar to like, um, you know, Silence of the Lambs. It's something people speak about Silence of the Lambs if you've got Anthony Hopkins as the main villain, even though mm-hmm. he's not. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's similar to this one where, well, I know he is the main villain, but he has like, 15 minutes of screen time and that's mm-hmm. the main, one of the main things people speak about in the film in a mm-hmm. three hour film is right or, well 220 whatever version mm-hmm. is marlon brando and that's mm-hmm. you know the biggest compliment you can give isn't it yeah definitely the most talked about part of that movie i think is those final 15 minutes when they're when it's they're together and give those speeches back and forth in the yeah, pitch black um my number five i'm gonna go robin williams as sean mcguire in goodwill hunting Again, I just feel like at yeah, this Robin, point, Robin Williams has just like built himself up as just such a purely, he, I mean, he's a stand-up comedy guy, comedic actor. Yeah, and then he he's just in this completely vulnerable role, who who has some comedy in it, but a lot of it's like sarcastic, tongue-in-cheek comedy, where it, most yeah, of it's like really vulnerable and emotional performance from him. Um, but yeah, so now one. we're in our top fours. Uh, oh, I'll go. I'll go four. Um. Yeah, mm. two options. Yeah, for four, do I want to go with that for four? Yeah, I do. For four, I'll go uh, Jack Nicholson for playing Jack Torrance in The Shining. Um, mm-hmm. I think capturing that kind of descent into true madness and the abuse that he inflicts, um, just a psychotic persona. I, I don't know, man. He. Especially in a Kubrick film as well. I don't know if Jack, I think Jack Nicholson is the perfect uh, actor, especially in that era of his career. Mm-hmm. Um, like I've seen a few other names. Like if you didn't know, uh, speaking about your pick, Robin Williams was initially uh, touted to play Jack Torrance in The Shining. That's crazy. Um, I did not know that. One of the people Kubrick wanted in, who I also think, in a weird way, could have kind of worked. You know what I mean? Because there's a kind of wacky sense. Mm-hmm. But I think Jack Nicholson has that, you know, scary sense mm-hmm. as well. He can really impose on people. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's definitely, yeah, absolutely one of my favorite cast choices of all time. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, Jack, I don't listen for the shot for The Shining. Mm-hmm. Great shot for sure. I, I really need to rewatch The Shining. It's been like two and a half years, and that was the only time I'd ever seen it, and it didn't hit me super hard. I mean, it's like it like four, but didn't like immediately fall in love with it. But I'm overdue. Uh, we still have none that overlap, so and I, I wonder if we ever will have anything overlap. I don't think we will, and I didn't really expect to coming into this, but I figured there might be one maybe we overlap on. But my number four will be. Uh, Christoph Waltz as Hans Landa in yeah. Inglorious Bastards, which is on a ton of lists. And initially, I didn't want to put it in there because I was like, "Oh, is it just a? Uh, is it just because he's just like a great performance?" But then I like read no, more about it, and he, it was like he was literally in nothing before this at all. And there's he, he was basically only cast because Tarantino needed someone who could speak fluently in four languages, and Waltz fit the bill. So it's like. I don't know if he would have just only knew three instead of four, we might have never gotten that performance out of him, which really kickstarted his career to being in so many other movies. It's just always, always kind of typecast as a similar kind of guy, but um, he kills it every time. I wish, uh, I wish Adam Sandler got to play the bad Drew. That'd be crazy. Mm-hmm. What was the reason he didn't? Was it just like scheduling? It was, I watched a video. It, it, he was shooting funny people at the time, mm. and it was a conflict issue with that. So yeah, shout out funny people. Good film. If you didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so that would have been cool if he was in it. For sure. Okay. My number three, I'll go for, I mean, my top three is going to be very obvious, especially to me. I try, What I tried to do with this is kind of give a variety. So let's be honest, I could have given 10 Lord of the Rings ones right now. Right. And not felt Because mm-hmm. in terms of character adaptations from a book, I don't know a franchise that's done it better. Harry Potter mm-hmm. has some like bangers as well. I could have fit loads of Harry Potter ones because mm-hmm. Harry Potter did crazy well, like really mm-hmm. well. Um, but Do I'm you have say, any Lord of the Rings in your top three? 
I do. I do. Oh, you, okay. You're just saying you, you could have had the I, I was I like, I, I want to know who your number one is. There's, Lord there's of the missing guy. ones. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah, could have for sure. you know, put so many in. My number three is going to be um, Viggo Mortensen for, for Aragorn. That's mm-hmm. one of the um, Can't think of an actor that could have played that kind of presence better. Uh, one of my favorite casting choices of all time by by far. Um, mm-hmm. I just wanted to get in there because it could have been a lot more Lord of the Rings. And there might be, but there could have been like 10, you know? Yeah, similar to sure. when we did the battle sequences draft. Right, they could have just all been Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I, but there, clue, there is one more Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. casting that I, I just had to get to in. I had mm-hmm. to. There's no way I could do it well. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if I can guess who it is, but we'll wait till we get there. You will. Um, my, my number three is, um, shout out Film Bros, Brad Pitt is Tyler Durden in Fight Club. That's an interesting one. Yeah, I just feel like the whole purpose of his character is to be like this mythical guy in terms of an unachievable physique, unachievable level of coolness. And like Brad yeah, Pitt yeah, at that yeah. time was just no, like okay, yeah. the hottest, coolest the guy. person yeah. imaginable. So it's like he's perfect for that role of being that kind of guy. Um, and he just looks so badass in that movie. Um, but now we're under our top two, number two. All right. My number two is, again, very obvious pick for me, uh, Gene Wilder. For, for Willy yeah. Wonka. I, I think no one I, will ever, and shout out to Timothy Chalmers because I thought he was great, but it's a very different stage of Wonka. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a more early optimistic. I don't think no anyone will ever capture that dry, sarcastic, sarcastic whimsical style quite mm-hmm. as well as Jude Wild my shoe. It's just the perfect casting. It, And I think coming off the back, I think it was um, Young Frankenstein before, or might, that, might be before that might have been after actually, but I can't remember around that period when Gene Wilder was like the man, especially in that space. I think um, that was just such a great cast and uh, all time favorite for me. I don't know if anyone will be able to replicate that sort of performance ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, great pick. One of the greatest performances, one of the greatest casting choices for sure. Um, my number two is kind of cheating, but it's not a draft, so it's not like it'll like cheat for picks or anything. But uh, I'm going both Al Pacino and Robert De Niro in Heat. Fuck because you! I feel like I it has to be. Two, I could have taken two Lord of the Rings ones. Like, to, no, I, I feel like, like the whole point of that is like they're finally dueling and standing off when they've had so many great. Like they were already like the guys on their own respects, and finally they like put like head to head in the movie face okay. against each other. Could I? I could I up to it. Could I have taken both, um, Soleri and uh, Amade and Wolfgang? You know. Yeah, you could have. You could have also picked like you know. Um, Lego Lass and Gimli, <laughs> yeah, just like some some pairs that are together. But yeah, okay, we're not uh, we're not going change. for votes anyway, so we can we can cheat. But is number one your last Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Or, or, yeah can yeah. I guess who it is? Yeah, you will be able to guess. There's no way you won't be able to guess. No, I don't think I will. I I, I think you're underselling how many great casting choices there are in it. No, like, I'm not. I think there's an obvious one. Me. Well, like with your preamble, I would think it'd be like Elijah Wood, but my guess is going to be Christopher Lee. Neither. Is it Gandalf? Yes, it's Ian McKellar. Yeah. 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 Well, it would have been. So it was actually. Um, so yeah, Christopher Lee, Saruman, amazing. Elijah Wood, amazing. Uh, my other pick. Uh, so my other like pick with um, my third pick would have actually been um, Sean Astin for for um, Gim- uh, Samwise. Mm-hmm. I like he is the epitome of what Samwise you know is as a character and what he possesses mm-hmm. in his traits. But you look at the Lord of the Rings castle, you've got like Gimli, Orlando Bloom. It's such a like phenomenal cast. Like Orlando Bloom for Legolas. I can't imagine anyone else ever playing. Do you know what I mean? I know that's easy to say for now. Sure. Bear in sure. mind, this is an Orlando Bloom who, you know, did like Black Hawk Down and a couple of things. But this was like before Pirates of the Caribbean, for example, where, where he stepped into the boots of uh, Will Turner. And, you know, when you think about the Lord of the Rings cast, there's a lot of names you'll know now, but most of them, who knew Elijah Wood? Who knew um, Sean Monaghan? Who knew uh, Sean Astin? You know what I mean? Like the only real notable names at that time were Viggo Mortensen, I guess. Orlando Loom, kind of. Christopher Lee, obviously. Christopher Lee's been a, you know, an Ian McKellen, you know, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was just full of actors who were like on the precipice of mainstream Hollywood or not even there yet, who they take, you know, decided to take a swing. And I can't pinpoint in my head one wrong choice you know what mm, i mean for sure and i yeah like even like fucking people like uh bernard hill r.i.p you know for, for king theater and mm-hmm. that's the fucking you know what i mean like that that could have gone on my list mm-hmm. um and i think that says a lot like how should, i could have picked any you know but mm-hmm. I, I think ian mckellen is like the uh, Gan- as gandalf is like the guy you know mm-hmm. that's just for me the number one anyway 
Yeah. So they're making more live action Lord of the Rings, right? Like that they announced yeah. that recently. And it's like yeah. a hunt like Gollum, like the first hunt for Gollum or something is like what it is. Yeah, it's the hunt for Gollum. Uh they did a obviously they did a, a fan film. So the story of that entails that you know Aragorn is in it. But I don't think because I mean Figan Morton's is in his like mid sixties now. And it would be he'd have to be younger than he was in the He'd have to be younger than he was. Yeah. So I don't know if that unless they did some like weird Indiana Jones the age and shit, which I fucking hate. Uh-huh. Then it's like do they I think they should remove him from the story because it's like you can't recast that at this point. You know what I mean? No, it's just, you, whoever gets cast is toast if they recast. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good they are. Yeah. So I, yeah, it's um it's gonna be an interesting one, really interesting one to see what they do with that. Yeah, for sure. Because like yeah, with with like the way Aragorn ages, like you could just make if Viggo Mortensen looked like the exact same as he did in the original trilogy, you could just leave it at that. He doesn't have to look younger. Yeah, yeah, like, of course. Because he's like Aragorn been, is, is superhuman essentially. Right, yeah, but still, yeah. it's been like what twenty years, twenty two years since the last. Yeah, like he just been, he, he yeah. does not look the same. Well, yeah, I mean it will it will be like twenty like twenty three, won't it? So it's just mm-hmm. gonna be like, yeah, too much. Yeah, know? yeah. It, it almost worries me that they might try something like that because like I was thinking like the most recent thing I've seen him in is like Crimes of the Future, which was two years ago, which like he's still like in good like his shape and like looks similar enough to where like which almost worries me to have, make them be like, yeah, we could throw like the wig and the makeup on and he'd look just like the same. And I'm like, no, I, yeah. I just don't think it would hit the same, but it'll be interesting to see what they do there because I, I feel like it's damned if they do damned if they don't but i think it's probably best like you said to just not have them in it just not include him yeah yeah. yeah. because i mean they've got andy circus for golem so they could work around it because there's many other characters they could kind of work in you know within the middle earth space so they don't necessarily have spring aragorn and i just think it wouldn't be worth the the hassle but Mm -hmm. i can see them just being like so and so has been cast as aragorn and the backlash just being crazy (laughs) yeah no they they were i mean like imagine oh my oh Paul Meskel? <laughs> no, I'm just I'm thinking about the woke people now, just like the reactions if they hired like a, a man of like a gay man or a black man. Do you know what I mean? It's just mm-hmm. oh, I can't even deal with the backlash of that already, to be honest. So it's whatever. I feel like they do like you said, doing if they do, doing if they don't, but I feel like it'd be easier just to be like, let's just leave him out of the story because mm-hmm. I can just hear all the complaints now. Well, whoever they, they do pack- Tom Holland. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, man. <laughs> I'd be just like <laughs> Crazy. That might be the yeah. only choice that they could possibly make that would actually get you to turn against the Lord of the Rings franchise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, whatever. Give me we'll see. One. I mean, when does that come? Hold on. When does that come out though? Like, is this, are we going to know anytime sooner? Is it going to be like a while before we get any news about this? Um. Well, hold on. Like, I'm sure once they start production, they won't be able to hide anything from us. But is that still like a ways out? I know they have their like animated stuff they're doing this year, like the War for Rome. 20, 2026. 2026. Well, so based on the yeah, scale, we'll, we'll probably be. soonish, we'll probably have some news. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you'd think so. I and mean, I don't know. Well, this is the thing, I don't know how big the film is gonna be. You know what I mean? I don't know how because it could be kind of a more um sort of closed, more intimate approach to to just Gollum as a character. Because yeah. it'd be more focused on his backstory, so it'd be obviously the prequel kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it could be, you know, I don't, I don't anticipate it to be as big scale as the Hobbits or you know the Lord of the Rings films, right. for example. So maybe it might be a case where it might be significantly smaller, and you know they're able to to not spend quite as much time in production. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's like, gonna be interesting. I mean, like some of the writers about Lord of the Rings, obviously, and then Peter Jackson's producing it and stuff. So that's always positive. promising. He's at least attached, but. Yeah, but we said that with the hobbits. Although right. <laughs> the hobbits were, I think the first two were cool, but the third one. It's different that the hobbits are actually based on like a what a three hundred page book, and they tried to do, do a trilogy out of, which is just mm-hmm. insane in itself. But yeah, give me your one. Yeah, my one is a is a pretty basic choice, but when I think about someone being cast, like it's it's just like the most bang on casting I've ever seen in my life, and that's Jesse Eisenberg is Mark Zuckerberg oh. in that work. Oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. Which when, 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 when you said Eisenberg, I was thinking Breaking Bad. Oh, I mean, that's what the two. I was I only was thinking like, movies, but obviously, when people yes, talk about yes. like casting choices in general, like that's usually near the top of the list. Yeah, that's like, a great one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's yeah, really I, good. Jesse Eisenberg is Mark Zuckerberg, just like so perfect, and I can see why like Zack Snyder th- tried to th- use that same persona to replicate Lex Luthor, but just didn't really pan out because. It's the same. He was basically given the same performance as Mark Zuckerberg, but 
it doesn't really work when you're putting that like it works when it's mark zuckerberg against people in a boardroom and like other yeah. employees yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't work when it's mark zuckerberg against superman and batman <laughs> like these ultra human people ultra trying human. to fight them. yeah that was yeah, fucking just... we should do like eventually we should do worst casting choices that'd be a fun one because i'm sure mm -hmm. that might appear if we all four of us did it especially as well mm -hmm. for sure Whoever played Joe Jan J Jonah Jameson in the the Amazing Spider-Man movies can go in that one because oh god, who's that? J.K. Simmons. I don't even know, and he might not even done a bad job, but it's just it's it's no J.K. Simmons. Yeah, but that's like anyone playing Aragorn. Do you know what I mean? Right, Same no, thing. I know. Yeah, I was just kidding. You know. Um, but yeah, there's our. I was gonna say draft. There's our rankings of just like top ten favorite casting choices. Of course, there's stuff like the classic, like you know Heath Ledger's Joker, Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man that I'll shout out because Cam would have drafted him. And those are like on everyone's list, but. Really, all I did for this was just like went on my letterbox and just like scrolled through some of my like five stars. Was like, yeah, they're good picks. Yeah, that's good what I did. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, there's our rankings. Let us know down below who some of your favorite casting choices of all time are. I feel like there's literally hundreds of not thousands of answers, of course, you could go for. So I want to see some opinions down in the comments down below. Um, but with that, we will see our patrons tomorrow with the review of Bram Stoker's Dracula from director uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Um, but with that, we will see other uh, everyone else on Monday on Real Talk episode 91 for a Richard Linklater special. Peace.